The third generation LS is one of the best cars in the world that I've ever tried. It's my most highly praised cars in all my reviews. But in 2007, Lexus released the fourth generation Lexus LS, which pretty much just looked like this. And sure, it's a brand new design and it looked beautiful for its time. But for today in 2021, this entire car just looks a little bit dated. But in 2013, Lexus released the facelift model, which is what we have here today. Here we have the 2013 Lexus LS 460 F Sport. Today I'm going to show you around this car and I'm also going to give it a test drive, so stay tuned. This absolutely beautiful, wonderful, and low mileage 2013 LS460 F Sport is for sale here at Metro Cars Passing. If you're interested in buying this car, I'll put their number in the description down below. Now I know a lot of people would argue that you don't really need the LS because the Lexus ES is already more than good enough. Well, that, that's based on the Camry or the Avalon, but yeah, I do have to agree that it is a great car. However, from the side, you can really appreciate the difference of the LS from the ES because, I mean, just take a look at the size of this thing or the length of it. And mind you, you can even get this car in long wheelbase form. But what we have here today is just the standard wheelbase because this is the S Sport model after all. Now in the front, you get the Brembo brakes, which is not something you really expect in a car like this, but you do get it with this S Sport kit. You also get 19-inch rims, the 245-45-19s. And at the back, uh, although you don't get Brembo brakes here, you still get the rather decent looking brake. While the F-Sport package doesn't really add any horsepower to the car versus the regular LS, you do get an F-Sport badge though, which at least in my heart and in my mind adds at least 10 horsepower. This facelifted 2013 Lexus LS460 is the first Lexus to have this new spindle grille, which a lot of people don't really like, but personally, I really love the look of it. This was also around a time when Lexus and, well, generally a lot of car manufacturers started making their logos a lot bigger. As you can see with this one, it's bigger than my entire hand. Now for this F Sport variant, you get revised bumpers for the front and the back. You get fog lamps and you also have these really, really nice lights over here. I love the design and they still look modern even today at 2021. The back of the LS looks really elegant as well. It's not sporty in any way. It's not trying to be sporty, even though it is an F Sport. It just looks rather stately and I really love that look. Now down here, you get the two actual exhaust pipes with nice surrounds to it. You get some sort of like a diffuser courtesy of the F-Sport package as well. And what I love about these are just these lights. Look how huge and how much they wrap around the car. Quite interesting, probably the biggest lights I've seen on any car. Now to open the boot up, there is a button right here, but it doesn't seem to work. So I'll just use the key. It takes a while, but then you get a power boot, which doesn't really make sense. Why do you need like a power boot? Anyway, once this is open, you reveal this huge boot right here and you can probably fit like two or three bodies in there but uh, if you don't have bodies in there you can lift this up and you're going to reveal a full-size spare tire and it's not only full-size but it has the proper matching rims these are a rare breed in 2021 under the hood of the lexus ls460 you don't have any of that bi turbo v6 nonsense instead you have a 4.6 liter one UR FSE V8 engine, which produces 386 horsepower and 498 newton meters of torque. Now it can propel this big beast from zero to 100 in only 5.7 seconds, despite again the size of this thing. So just think about that. This is also mated to an eight speed automatic transmission, which is actually the world's first eight speed automatic transmission. Since the LS is one of those cars you want to be chauffeured in, first let's start at the back. Now let's check the thud of the door. While it's reassuring, it's not as reassuring as like German car door sounds. So anyway, back here you get tons of legroom. And mind you, again, this is just a standard wheelbase. So if you have the long wheelbase, you're just gonna be swimming in legroom back here. You can also move the seat forward right here by just pressing this button right here. As for toys, you don't really have that much for this exact model right here. So you get your own vanity mirrors up top with floodlights, very reminiscent of the W220S class. You get more lights up top here. You get two air vents, not just here in the middle, but you also get another two on either B pillars. You get the 12 volt outlet, and then you have an armrest, but there's no buttons here, or you can't even recline the rear seats. That's about it back here. You get a cubby though, and uh, two cup holders. Now finally you have that thing at the back, you have your own sun shield, but it can only be controlled by the driver. So you don't have any controls back here. Can you see three people back here? While the car is very wide, the problem here is the headroom. This seat is incredibly high. So even if I'm only five, six, there's just like 
an inch of headroom left so that's gonna be a little bit of a problem but that's fine because this car is really meant to be an executive car and most of the time it's only just gonna be you and your partner back here now for materials though it's amazing back here so you get so much soft touch materials all around and where it's not leather it is felt so up top here on the b pillar and the roof lining too it's all soft velvet here in the front of the ls versus check the third of the door decent sounding door now let's start the car up it does have push button nice v8 sound in here just like the back you get really premium materials all around the cabin i'm talking about like so much soft touch up on the dash you're on the side to where your knees would hit too on the center console that's also really soft the seats are amazingly comfortable you get these f sport headdress which look really good it's also 10-way power adjustable i believe and you also get like thigh support which is like those things you get in an s-class and that really makes your drive very comfortable your steering wheel for the f-sport model you get an f-sport steering wheel you also get paddle shifters for your instrument cluster though since this is a u.s spec car you do get miles per hour and kilometers per hour this car by the way only has 16,438 kilometers on it not miles kind of odd but yeah now in the middle you get a huge screen it's 12.3 inches while it looks really crisp even for 2021 standards what i don't like about it is that it is controlled by this like track pad in the middle and honestly it is quite hard to use even when the car is parked and stationary so imagine when you're driving it's going to be way harder to use but not to worry because it makes up for it by giving you a, an amazing sounding mark levinson sound system it sounds really great now your shifter it's one of those things that lexus started doing in the 2013 era and it's still like that gated thing but everything's wrapped in like leather so you don't really see it it looks rather futuristic you get dual zone climate control for the front of this car then this thing right here it moves in a really nice way it like goes up a little moves back and then raises up at the back this is just a really interesting thing that Lexus does. Now, you also get like a couple modes for this car. So you get like comfort mode, eco mode, you get normal, sport, and even sport plus, which can all be controlled by the small wheel in the middle. And you also have uh, what I love the most with these Lexus cars. You push this thing up and just like those DJ turntable things, those mixer things, you can twist it and you're gonna get heated and cooled seats. It's just going to make you a very happy driver even in the hottest summer days of Manila. A couple of really cool things with this car is that first you get a carbon fiber trim. Then you also get the three settings for your power memory seats. In most cars, it's just two. Now you also have this button right here which uh, moves the uh, anchor point of the seat belt just like that automatically and electrically. That's really amazing. It also goes with the memory of the seats. Finally, down here, you can even pull this and give you a little bit more cubby space. I know Mercedes and Bentleys makes really nice centerpiece clocks for their cars, but even this Lexus right here, oh, look at the Japanese quality, it looks amazing. This car is obviously geared towards executives. As per here, as you can see, aside from fuel consumption, traffic incidents, Lexus Insider, your weather, you also get stocks, sports, and fuel prices. So driving the 2013 Lexus LS460. As you get into this car, immediately you'll note just how comfortable this is. The NVH suppression is on a different level. Now I dare say that it's on the same level as S-Classes, which uh, costs a little bit more. But really, everything is just so smooth and serene in this car. The potholes and the road imperfections, you barely feel them. Even if you put this car in Sport Plus mode and it gets a little bit stiffer, it's still very comfortable overall, especially for this F Sport package because it's also one inch lower than the regular LS. So the fact that you're a bit lower to the ground probably adds a little bit more to the comfort that it provides. And of course, the stability. Now, when it comes to uh, the quietness of this car, uh, I'm riding on like 2012 manufactured tires. So they're a bit old and there is a little bit of tire noise, but I do suspect that the very moment you change that to a fresh set of tires, it's gonna get even quieter in here. When you're sitting at a traffic stop and you're going at idle, it's as if you're driving like a hybrid vehicle or an electric vehicle because you absolutely feel no vibration at all. The only thing that makes you uh, know that your car is on is you're blowing air vents. That's it. You hear the air vents pumping air and that's exactly it. You don't feel the engine turning on because it's just <laughs> smooth. It's smooth, very smooth. Now the body roll in this car, if you turn it quite fast, 
uh, yeah, there's a lot of body roll in this car, even if you put it in like Sport Plus mode, but it's, it's of course a little bit better than Comfort mode. You do get air suspension though, and as you go off like that, oh god, that's, that's already 120. So fast, you don't even hear it. It's just smooth. You can be traveling like 200 plus kilometers per hour in this car and you really won't feel it. You're not supposed to be doing it in this car, but for the lols, we're just gonna, we're just gonna launch this car. Sport Plus mode, go. Zero to 105.7 seconds. We're at the uh, 80 and whoa, we're at the 100. Jeez. Wow, that, that's just crazy fast, this car. And again, you don't hear the engine at all. You just get pushed back to your seat in a very uh, supple manner. Plus the fact that your seats are also very soft themselves. It's just an amazing feel. Your, your back and your head touches these leather seats as you accelerate and it's just, ooh. <laughs> amazing feeling that it can provide you when you don't want to be like a stupid guy who launches your ls and you just want to drive along comfortably it's just incredibly serene in here just like lie down a little bit turn up my uh thigh support a little bit more and just recline a little bit i can also of course adjust my headrest electronically look at that look at that going up uh. I can easily find the perfect driving position. Plus the fact that the steering wheel too, by the way, is also electrically adjustable. So finding your perfect driving position in this one is so damn easy. Just one really thing I hate about this car, as mentioned earlier in the interior shots, is that the uh, trackpad thing you use to control the infotainment system, it's incredibly hard to use, especially when you're on the go. Just hard to like find the particular setting you want to go to. It's a bit too jumpy and all that. It's not precise at all, and haptic feedback isn't exactly there. So you're still best off using like the command system of Mercedes-Benz or even better using BMW's iDrive. Question is, can you drive this car in tight Manila streets? Uh, yes, you can if you have a chauffeur. If you want to daily this car yourself, it could be a little bit of a struggle because it is incredibly long and this uh, rather tight road as I'm going around it. Yeah, it took up all four lanes. That's how big the turning radius is in this car. But that's fine because that's really normal in this segment. If there's one thing car reviewers hate about the LS460, and me included, is that when you accelerate it, unlike an S-Class, the back dips so much and under hard braking, yeah, it really digs in forward. So if you have like an executive at the back and he wants you to drive smoothly but quick, he's not gonna be happy about sudden stops and sudden accelerations with the LS. Is this car for you? Well, okay, on one hand, it's great because they're way cheaper than a lot of Mercs. They're way easier to maintain. They won't break down anywhere. And Lexus is known for their reliability. After all, it is a glorified Toyota as much as that sounds quite bad. But on the other hand, you don't get the prestige of ownership with a Mercedes-Benz. But who cares about that? I think people mostly just care about stuff like that. If it's going to be their first luxury car, if it's going to be their first... Uh, status symbol however once you've gone past through that threshold of needing to prove who you are this car is the perfect car you can get you don't need to prove to anyone what you can afford you just want the sheer quality that you can get with the particular car and this car's quality is definitely up there if you like this video please don't forget to smash the like button for the youtube algorithm and also don't forget to subscribe to my channel to see more car reviews